Hi, this is David Davis, and this lesson is from my VMware vSphere 5 video training course. I hope you enjoy it. Hello, and welcome to Train Signal. You're watching Administering vSphere using an iPad. In this lesson, I'll start off by covering the features of the vSphere client for iPad. We'll cover the requirements to use it, and then how to install the vCenter mobile access piece, which is required. After that, we'll install the vCenter client for the iPad, and then I'll show you how it can use it and what it can do for you. So with that, let's get started. The vSphere client for the iPad is an administrative client. So it's for you as a VMware admin to keep track of the virtual machines and the hosts and the virtual infrastructure, monitor the performance of those hosts and virtual machines, stop, start, and suspend virtual machines, view and restore virtual machine snapshots, reboot vSphere hosts or put them in maintenance mode, and then even to diagnose vSphere hosts and virtual machines using built-in tools like ping and traceroute. Now, in order to use this vSphere client for iPad, of course, you'll have to have vSphere and vCenter already in place. However, vCenter actually isn't required. You can get by without using vCenter if you wanted to put all this on an individual ESXi server. Still, most people will have both vSphere and vCenter and then the real required piece is vCenter Mobile Access, which is also known as vCMA. And it's a virtual appliance available from VMware Labs over at labs.vmware.com slash flings slash vCMA. I'll go to the website in just a second and we'll download it. But something else you'll need is a network connection to the vCMA server. And that could be either via the local LAN. Let's say you've got your iPad on the local LAN. Or if you're out on the internet, say you're at the local coffee shop and you want to use the vSphere client for the iPad to check on your vSphere virtual infrastructure, um, very likely you'd want to use a VPN uh, through the iPad client to a VPN server that you have on the internet to get access to your local LAN to use the vSphere client. Now, I was told that you could put vCenter mobile access even directly on the internet, uh, but most people don't recommend that for security reasons. You might be able to do it in a lab environment to get by just to test and learn about the vSphere client for iPad. So you can think of the vCenter mobile access piece as a web proxy to manage the virtual infrastructure through a web browser and other clients like the vSphere client for iPad. Then, of course, you actually need the vSphere client for iPad, which is free via the iTunes store. So now let me show you how to install vCenter mobile access. Let's go over to the VMware Labs website where we'll download the OVF file so that we can deploy it using the vSphere client. This is the vCenter Mobile Access website. Um, it's a 287 megabyte OVF file that you download and import into the virtual infrastructure. And it's actually used not just for the vCenter client for iPad, but you can even use it to give you a mobile web access interface, even so that you could use, say, like a BlackBerry to administer the virtual infrastructure. They have information here about the system requirements. There are instructions that you can download, actually a deployment guide, and even a video that shows vCenter mobile access in use with a BlackBerry. But we're going to use it with an iPad. So to save us some time, I've already downloaded the OVF file here. So now let's go over to our vSphere client where we'll deploy vCenter mobile access as a virtual appliance. Here in the vSphere client, to deploy vCenter mobile access, I'm just going to go up to File, then down to Deploy OVF Template. Here I need to browse to the directory where I stored vCenter Mobile Access. It's actually in this folder here. And there's the OVF file. I'll click Open. I'll click Next. And it says here, do you want to deploy this version of vCenter Mobile Access? Yes, we do. I'll say Next. I'll accept the license agreement and say Next. It gives us the default name here, vCenter Mobile Access. I'll just leave that and say Next. And then we're asked where we want to deploy vCenter Mobile Access. I'll put it on my iOmega SAN and click Next. Let's do the thin provisioning option here to save us some disk space. Say Next. And then I'll click here to power on after deployment and say Finish. Of course, it'll take a minute here to deploy the uh, roughly 300 megabyte uh, virtual appliance. So I'm going to pause the video recording and I'll be right back as soon as it's done. 
At this point, the VCMA virtual appliance has deployed successfully and powered on automatically after boot. And you can see on the console here the IP address to manage it. Uh, it received via DHCP. It says to point your web browser to HTTPS colon slash slash 10.0.1.125 colon 5480. So now let me go over to my web browser and let's verify that we can manage it through that interface. Here on the web interface for VCMA, I've pointed my web browser up here to the same URL you saw on the console. And then we can just log in with the default username of root and the default password of VMware. I'll click login, and it has a super simple uh, web interface here. Really, all you can do is uh, set some basic network information here. I can assign a static IP address and DNS uh, information. In fact, let's go ahead and go in here and do that. I'm going to set this to 10.0.1.247 and configure my netmask, gateway, and DNS server. I'll click save settings there. And then when I do, the IP address changes, and I need to go up here and modify the URL. And there we go. We can log in now. And if we go to network, we can see the static IP address is now defined. Okay, so from here, really the only other thing you can do other than editing the network settings is to reboot or shut down vCenter mobile access. I've already made a DNS host alias for the IP address of vCenter Mobile Access. And now let's go back to our slides and let's talk about installing the vSphere client for iPad. The vSphere client for iPad is a free iPad client for administering vSphere. Like I said earlier, it requires local LAN access or VPN access to the vCMA. And just like any iPad application, it's easily downloaded and installed through iTunes by connecting your iPad to your computer and then of course going to the iTunes store. You can search iTunes for vSphere client or you can go to the URL that I specified right there. In fact, let's go over to iTunes now. Here's what the vSphere client looks like in the iTunes store. As you can see, it's a free app and it's only 1.1 megabytes. They've got some nice screenshots here and it's rated very highly by the people who have downloaded it. At this point, I'm going to connect my iPad to my computer, download the free application, sync it to the iPad, and then I'll be right back and we can continue on with the next steps to using the vSphere client for iPad. With the free vSphere client for iPad successfully installed on my iPad using iTunes, there's just a few configurations you need to do. When you first click on the client and run it, it'll ask for the IP address or DNS name of the vCMA virtual machine. I showed you how to find that on the console of the virtual machine through the vSphere client. I've already entered an alias in my DNS server for that IP address, so all I had to do when I ran the vSphere client on my iPad was to enter that DNS name. From there, I simply entered my vCenter server name, username, and password, and I was ready to go. Let me show you what it looks like. So here's where I typed in my vCMA server's DNS name that I entered in DNS. And of course, my iPad under the network settings had to have the correct DNS server entry. From there, I was prompted to enter my vCenter server name, username, and password. And then I was successfully logged in to the vSphere client for iPad. You can see there the name of my vCenter server. It does indeed support vCenter server version 5. I have two hosts and six virtual machines in my lab virtual infrastructure. You can see that there are Dell hosts, the version of ESXi server they're running, and the number of virtual machines running on each host. From there, I clicked on a particular ESXi server, ESX server number 3 at the Wired Brain Coffee Company. You can see I had low CPU utilization, but relatively high memory utilization with 69%. You can see the version of processor, number of processors, amount of RAM, number of NICs, and whether or not vMotion is enabled. You can see all my virtual machines there, and there's an operating system icon representative of each different type of guest OS. From there, I clicked on a guest OS. In fact, it was my vCenter virtual machine, and you can see that it's running Windows Server 2008 R2, the amount of CPU that it's using, amount of memory it's using, its IP address, its status, its VMware tool status, and then any snapshots that it has. 
I could even go directly to a snapshot from here, and then I can see the latest events related to this virtual machine. From there, I clicked on the performance button on the bottom of the virtual machine, and I got a graph for CPU, memory, disk, and network. So I could see utilization over time for that virtual machine. I also tried out the tools button on the bottom of the screen for the virtual machine, and I saw that I can do pings and trace routes for that virtual machine's IP address. There's also a virtual machine actions button where I could suspend, stop, or restart the virtual machine. Then I went back to the ESXi server level and I found I could do all those same things at the host level. So I could view performance charts, I could use the troubleshooting tools, and I could even do the little gear drop down up there where I could restart or shut down the ESXi host, all from the vSphere client for iPad. So soon, just like me, you'll be sitting in the beach with your iPad administering your virtual infrastructure. I hope that that dream becomes reality. So what did we learn in this lesson? Well, you learned the benefits of the vSphere client for iPad. You found out the requirements to use it. Specifically, you need vSphere, and it's highly recommended you have vCenter. You learned how to download and install vCenter Mobile Access, or vCMA, which is essentially a web proxy for vCenter. It's a free tool available from labs.vmware.com. After that, we downloaded the free vSphere client for iPad from the iTunes Store, installed it, and then we're able to administer our vSphere virtual infrastructure using the very cool vSphere client for iPad. Thanks for watching this lesson covering administering vSphere using your iPad. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training, please visit www.trainsignal.com.